Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for this week's trade recap and forecast. A uh, pretty average week for me in general. I think I took three trades. I had one loss, one win, and one break even. Uh, sort of a very small loss, but pretty much break even. Um, ended the week around break even as well. Main reason being that my one win that came was with a new strategy I'm testing. And I'm only using a very small risk on this at the moment whilst I'm you know, still in development of the strategy. Uh, so I'll take you through that. I'll take you through all the other trades. And yeah, we'll jump sort of straight into it. Now, starting with EU, which is the first pair on my checklist. Uh, I didn't take any trades this week on this pair. As you can see, we were coming from a very clear sort of range last week where we had corrective breaks of highs, corrective breaks of lows, no real um, clear momentum in either direction. And then on Monday, coming into the new week, we saw... Um, you know, some fairly significant bearish momentum. We had this nice sort of impulse break. Yes, we arguably hadn't actually broken out of the range yet. We were sort of creating these double lows here, uh, but we had a very weak retracement and a strong continuation. At this point, I was looking to get involved in possible continuation setups. But as you can see, we had this very large break here, which was a warning sign. Me then saw this V retrace, which for me showed a clear shift in momentum. And at that point, I wasn't looking to get involved in any continuation setup. As you see, we came back very aggressively to our most recent low, which would be where our bullet line would be from, where we're taking those short entries. Um, yeah, not something I wanted to get involved. You then see we have this range, but after this large wick and shift in momentum, I wasn't looking for a flag formation either. Uh, we did actually get a flag formation. As you can see, price breaks our internal high here. We get that bearish candle. So if you were looking for an entry, it would be here. And as you can see, with a 12 pip stop loss, you would have been stopped out. Um, not a trade that I would recommend taking simply because of that large wick and aggressive retrace. Um, otherwise, we then continued uh, sort of two corrective breaks of the most recent low, corrective break of the high, corrective break of the low, again, forming a very clear range here. And at the very end of the week, sort of on uh, Thursday morning, we began to see some more bearish momentum. We had this really strong impulse to the downside. Again, I was looking to see if we could get a flag set up here or a weak retrace continuation get involved in a bullet um but you can see really aggressive uh retrace i then wanted to see some form of range we didn't have that we had that small inside bar candle price broke above yes we had a strong rejection uh but not something i was looking to get involved in there i wanted to see much cleaner of a range and also this was just again showing a clear v in price action similar to over here not looking to get involved there and then on Friday, uh, as you guys will know, I don't trade on Fridays, but it's NFP. So that's the first Friday of the month. I usually take that day. Well, not usually. I always take that day completely off. Uh, and as you can see, around 1 p.m. when NFP came out, we had this really strong bullish push to the upside. So coming into the new week, uh, I won't be looking for a flag here, although we might have a nice flag form. If I mark it out for you, we have that strong impulse. We have our um, internal low form. But possibly having an internal high form here we could wait for a break of that and get involved on a bullish candle for entry that would be a valid flag formation uh, i personally don't trade these over the weekend it's not something i've tested so it's not something i'll be looking to get involved in uh, that being said though if we can continue to the upside with a nice impulse like this i will look to get involved on a retest of our most recent high wherever that is or hopefully we can start to see a sort of nice trend to the upside um otherwise it's possible we see a large range um what will happen there obviously this move has come from news and sometimes when we have really strong moves from news we can see price simply begin to range within this area if that happens uh i'll just be looking for price to break out i won't be looking to take any trades within that area um but yeah promising if we can continue to the upside we'll hopefully have some sort of high probability setups as long as that momentum can continue now, moving on to AU, which is the next pair in my checklist. Uh, already, you can sort of see from this straight away, we're in a really, really clear range. You can literally put a box around it here. Uh, very sideways price action. No real uh, clear sort of momentum. Yes, we have had some momentum candles, but they've always been followed by sort of corrective breaks. Um, and as you guys will know, my strategy at the moment on the one hour is a trend-based strategy. It's looking for strong trends in markets. And usually when we see price action like this, I'm not looking to get involved. However, with that being said, I am testing a new strategy now, which is a range bound strategy. Um, so it obviously works in more range bound price action. 
and you know, sort of being developed so that I'm still able to get involved in the market when we have conditions like this. And I'm only testing it on AU at the moment. I've only done about seven or eight months of testing. Uh, so I want to get a lot more data before I start using it uh, with full risk in the live market. But I am happy to start testing it in the live market at the moment. And I will take you through that setup because there was a setup we took this week. Um, obviously, I have just mentioned how sort of range bound we are here. Again, you can see very clear range, but lots of corrective breaks of highs. Lots of corrective breaks of lows, no real momentum in either direction. And if I just highlight the trade we took uh, in August here, there we go. You can see coming into the week, I will actually rewind price action so we can see this a bit clearer. Uh, I'll just hide this. This is sort of my back testing at the moment, as I say, on 2021. So I'm sort of near the end of Q3 now testing this strategy. Um, and what I just want to show is we've got this clear range. When we see ranges like this, we often see uh, a lot of retail traders buying at the tops of ranges, um, sorry, selling at the top of ranges, buying at the bottom of ranges. That means typically there's a lot of stop loss orders there. Um, I'm going to go over this very quickly. Apologies for that. If you do want me to do a full video on the strategy or maybe some back testing that I'm doing at the moment, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to record a video on that. Um, but very quickly, we're looking for clear ranges. And I've already mentioned we're in a clear range at this point. You can see we had corrective breaks of the lows down here after this sort of impulse but large wick we've then broken to the upside correctively we've broken the high correctively we've broken the low correctively broken the high again clear range bound price action you know there's no clean trends here we see price come up and we sort of see this um double top forming so you can see not the cleanest as this is uh, a bit lower this sort of tap here but you can see that if we've got people especially on lower time frames trading ranges there's going to be a lot of people taking sales uh, up here. And that means we actually have uh, some liquidity forming up here, which is sort of what I've drawn this box here. Um, and for this strategy, I simply wait for these areas uh, of liquidity, as they're called, to be um, sort of spiked. So we wait for price to spike into them, wait for a clear rejection. Uh, and then similar to the flag entry, we either look for a bearish candle or a bullish candle for entry. And as you can see, we had price spike up into this area really really strong rejection yes this did happen during news um but this type of rejection this engulfing rejection as well added more confluence again we're in this really clear range we're reaching the top of that range swept some really nice liquidity so i was happy to get involved here very similar to the bomb setup 12 pip stop loss on au is what i'm testing at the moment and it is a fixed three hours um trade so as opposed to the trend strategies which i'm using that trailing stop loss this range bound strategy at the moment i'm testing uh 3r i've also been testing 2r but 3r seems to be the most profitable at the moment and i got involved straight away on the close of this candle and you can see it was a really strong trade we continued to the downside uh with a lot of momentum and i was taken out for a 3r percent sorry 3r profit um as i mentioned this is in testing i'm not using full risk yet because that wouldn't be very smart of me. I've done that in the past before where I've been testing new strategies on live accounts and it's never gone well. So 0.25% risk. So I'm using a quarter of what I normally use. So this 3R um, win was actually a 0.75% win. Um, but yeah, good trade. Uh, very happy to have taken it. Uh, very happy to have taken my first live trade with this strategy. And yeah, I will be taking uh, hopefully a lot more of these trades if they occur. And if you'd like more info on this strategy, like a backtesting video or something like that, let me know in the comments and I will get around to recording one. Now, if we just hide this up and we can look at what happened for the rest of the week. Uh, and as you can see, prices just continued in this really clear uh, range bound, as I say, very flat sideways price action. Um, I will still be looking for these range bound entries. Uh, we can see that we're going to have some very clear areas of liquidity above and below. And if we just take our sort of major high here in recent price action, we've also got a major low down here. And I'll be waiting to see if price can sweep one of these and give a nice rejection like that. Or equally to the downside, we might see price sweep that low and give a nice rejection. Otherwise, not really looking to get involved in this area. Uh, I'll hopefully just wait for a new, very clear trend to form. And then we can look to get involved in some continuations. Now, moving on to AJ next, just because there's a trade that I took here that I want to talk about first before I discuss something that occurred on EJ. Um, and a bit of an interesting week, actually, because we had this clear range at the end, uh, sort of midway through last week. 
we began to see some momentum to the downside, but we were getting these large wicks. We were breaking highs as well, so quite corrective. Um, and then sort of midway through this week, we had this small sort of impulse here. Um, really not the clearest either because we have this large wick, uh, small retrace, break of the high. So technically what we had here was a valid bomb because we have uh, the impulse, we have the internal high form, we have the internal low form, we have the internal high form, and then we have our bearish candle for entry. And I did actually take an entry here. However, reviewing this, I realized it wasn't the most high probability at all. Uh, firstly, we're not in a clear trend. Secondly, we have this very large wick. Yes, um, the retrace was weak and arguably showed no shift of momentum. The biggest warning sign for me was simply the size of this stop loss. Um, reason I got involved here, um, and I'm not actually annoyed at myself for getting involved here, it's given me a really good point to sort of um, go into my testing and see what works and what doesn't, is that I don't actually have a clear rule on sort of taking trades when my stop loss looks very small. So if this had been a trade and my 12 pip stop loss had looked like this or something, I wouldn't have questioned it at all, but simply because of how small that stop loss looks in comparison to recent price action, I was a bit hesitant. Um, the main reason I took it, again, as I say, is because in my trading plan at the moment, I don't have a clear rule about this. So that's simply shown that I need to make a clear plan. So I need to go back through my data again, find all of the trades where I have um, flags with very small stop losses, see what the general sort of profitability is during that, if it's worth it. Um, one of the main things that sort of influenced me here was that trade we took last week, which was obviously 12.47%. As you can see here, again, very, very small um, stop loss, very similar setup, arguably not as big of a wick as you can see. That was a moderate wick, whereas this was a very large wick. So um, again, probably a bit too aggressive here, and I'm very happy to admit that. I've put that into my trade journal. Um, probably a trade I wouldn't take in the future, but I think I was sort of a bit... Um, you know, the recency bias was definitely coming into me here. I saw this trade here and I thought, oh, you know, if we continue straight down, I'll be able to maximize those profits. Um, but in the general sort of grand scheme of things, not that high probability of a setup. Uh, as you can see, we broke higher, we broke the low again correctively, broke the high fairly correctively, broke the low, um, sort of small range forming there. We have continued to the downside, but again, we've got these large wicks there, large wicks there, large wicks here broken again and retraced, so very corrective, uh, sort of forming a small DC at the moment, so a descending channel. Coming into next week, I would like to see this descending channel continue, and then hopefully we can get a break of our most recent high. We can look for some form of reversal, as we know price likes to do from these channels. Uh, otherwise, we might get a strong sort of impulse to the downside. I'd then be happy to look for some form of continuation. But again, price has been quite volatile. I'd quite like to um you know be a bit more cautious on the two japanese pairs at the moment just because of how small these stop losses are uh, as i say even if using you know a 12 pip stop loss down here you can see how small that looks compared to recent price action so really not ideal and this is where i need to be um, a lot more careful so i'm not sort of just throwing away those profits and giving them back to the market so moving on to EJ, and this is actually the reason i wanted to go over aj first is because we had a very similar setup uh, it was probably a setup that was actually more high probability than the AJ one, um, but I'll take you through it and I'll explain my psychology and why I want to make a note of this. Very, very similar price action. We had this range last week, start of this week, we start to push down very correctively. We're breaking lows with large wicks. We're also breaking highs, uh, not the cleanest, but then we do have this impulse to the downside. Again, similar to AJ, we end with a large wick. But this retrace is really weak. Uh, we sort of retrace into the wick, which is nice. We sort of fill that wick. We range around and then we break our bomb line. So our internal high very correctively. And we get a nice entry candle there. And there was actually a valid setup here. Um, let me just hide that. Again, 12 pip stop loss. Uh, I think this occurred a few hours after the AJ trade. And again, this is why I wanted to go over the AJ trade first, is that I saw this in the live market. And after the AJ trade, I said to myself, no, I'm not going to trade it. The stop loss is too small. Um, and it is realistically, again, if the stop loss had looked like this, if that was a 12 pip stop loss, it would have been a no brainer for me. It fit my plan perfectly. Even with that large wick, we'd had a really weak retrace, no shift of momentum, corrected break of the bomb line, 
So high probability, in my opinion, even with the corrected price action before. But with that small wick, with the loss I'd just taken, again, I'm talking about recency bias here. I hesitated. I decided not to get involved. And then I sort of, you know, <laughs> kicked myself in the back when I saw price drop to, um, you know, 16% or something. I would have been able to pass my phase two challenges, uh, you know, Obviously, hindsight talking there, price easily could have rejected um, and broken higher, would have been taken out for a 1% loss, um, like I was on AJ. But it goes to show why I need to have a clear rule in my trade plan, because otherwise I'm going to be second guessing. And that's when the psychology begins to get involved. If I've got you know a clear line in my trading plan that says, even if stop loss looks very small compared to recent price action, take the trade or obviously the opposite if stop loss looks very small compared to recent price action don't take the trade at least then i know for certain what i'm doing is right or wrong according to my um trade plan according to my edge according to all the data i have so it's something i need to do i have recorded this trade as a mistrade um i've you know considered it low probability just because of the size of that stop loss the same as the aj one but that's something i'm going to go into in my uh, back testing data now and create a very clear rule about this. Um, realistically, in the live market, I should have got involved because at the moment it does fit my plan. As I said, I don't have a clear rule at the moment, so I should have taken that setup. I didn't. I let my emotions get the better of me. Uh, it did end up being a 1.27% uh, win. So it was a winning trade, uh, but you can see it does go like 15%, 16% into profit. So if you'd closed uh, at the max, which is not something I advise, but you know, if you're doing challenges and stuff, would have been a really, really nice trade. Um, otherwise, on EJ, broke the high correctively, broke the low correctively, broke the low correctively, broke the high. Again, very clear range bound price action. Um, not like AJ, we're not seeing a clear descending channel form yet because we're having these breaks of the high. So we're sort of seeing a clear range form. And because of that, I'll simply be looking for a very strong impulse to the upside or a very strong impulse to the downside wait for a clear trend to form, and then I'll be looking to get involved on those sort of continuation setups. Now, moving on to GU, which is the final pair on my checklist. Uh, I did take a trade on GU this week. It was a very small loss, sort of around minus 0.1%, uh, so sort of a break-even trade. Um, and I will take you through that, but obviously coming into the week, we were forming a really clear uh, large descending channel. Uh, I mean, I can literally just mark this like here. You can see very descending price action. We're breaking lows correctively each time. Yes, we're having sort of small impulses and then very large corrections. Um, but overall, price action was very descending. Um, sort of halfway through the week, I guess on Thursday, uh, yeah, Thursday morning, we had this nice impulse to the downside. At this point, I was looking to get involved in shorts. Uh, obviously, we are descending, but the channel is very large. So I was happy to get involved there but we had a very small retracement candle. We broke the low correctively and pushed up. So that ended um, our bearish trend. We then saw some corrective breaks of the highs and we then saw an impulse to the downside. And this is where I was then happy to get involved again. Um, arguably not the cleanest bearish trend because we've had these corrective breaks of the highs. But if you're looking at the overall uh, scheme of things, we've got this sort of impulse to the downside, this large ranging retrace. We continue to the downside fairly aggressive retrace obviously there is a clear v here in price action but we then continue to the downside and we have a very weak retrace here with the inside bar we have our internal high form we then have another internal high if i zoom in a bit you'll be able to see this we have sorry another inside bar which forms our internal low we then break our internal high correctively with this large wick and we get that bearish candle for entry so it was a valid uh flag here and I'll just highlight that for you. So I did take this trade. Uh, I got involved on the close of that bearish candle uh, just after spread hours. Price continued down fairly correctively. We had those large wicks. Large wicks. At this point, I had reduced um, my risk with my stop loss, obviously trailing it to somewhere around this level, obviously two pips above that inside bar, which was our most recent high. Uh, and I was taken out here, as I say, for around minus 0.1%. Um, very valid trade, happy I took it, uh, especially with the sort of impulse and very weak retrace with no shift in momentum, but arguably not the most high probability prior price action because of this sort of V shape here. Usually after a V we see a range, uh, but that doesn't always happen, which is 
you know, why I was sort of happy to get involved on that impulse. Um, otherwise, we've now seen price push to the upside, although we've created these very clear equal highs. We've had that strong rejection. Um, as I say, I don't trade flags over the weekend, so I'm not going to be looking for anything in here. Uh, I don't think I would be anyway, just because of that wick and sort of shift in momentum on that initial retrace. So otherwise, we could see price range within here like this. Um, very possible, especially as this move came from NFP. Um, but in terms of trades, I'll simply be waiting for a very strong impulse to the upside for a trend to form or a very strong impulse to the downside, a trend to form. And then again, of course, looking for those continuation setups. So I think that pretty much sums up uh, the whole week. Uh, I've gone for every pair there and all the trades that I took or uh, perhaps missed. Uh, hopefully you found some value from that. If you have, let me know in the comments. And also, if you would like me to record a video of me doing some backtesting on that new range bound sort of liquidity sweep entry model, let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to do that at some point in the next week. Thanks, guys. Have a good week.